Right, so Chad nil all at half time. Obviously, the second half didn't quite go the way you wanted. What uh, changed there in the second half? I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, um, it seems to be a bit of an issue. Not so much maybe the half time thing, which obviously South was the same. Um, I say obviously a lot. I noticed that lately. Anyway. Um, it's more when we can see that first goal, uh, and when you're a team that's struggling, you know, you, 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 or who we are, um, seeing that goal, it's all of, a, all of a sudden the mountain gets bigger and the work has to get harder. And, um, I think it's more that. I think it's just the confidence gets shot and players start forgetting what the structure is. And for me, it was all structure. Like when you're going in with Paul Palmer and Joe Stevens, who aren't the quickest blokes going around, um, but we, we we're going in with that because I'm sick of. I don't want to just play bomb long football. We're trying to actually play football, and like um, you know, the first half was good. I, I thought we knocked it around in stages, um, got out of trouble well. One you know, one touch football, and we, we work on that uh, pretty well at training. We've never done it in a game, so it was good today, um, but still only half a job. So it was a decent start. Um, do you think if you'd pinched one or two early, you could have um, yeah. got a good result? Over there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought we had we had a few chances all game to to get into dangerous positions. We did, but I uh, like George sort of said. Everyone kind of you can talk about structure and you can talk about game plans and all that. In the end, it's just natural ability or, or your 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 ability or yours to control the ball and knock a pass. Or and uh, Devonport for me today just had those. More players on the park who could consistently control the football and hit feet and, and beat a player and cross a ball and all that. Um, uh, and, and ours, to a man, one or two just had bad games. Um, and we've got too many players carrying the rest. And I think when we have a game where your worst player still has a decent game, we'll be much better for it. But it's just brain lapses. You know, I could pick out a few times where guys have just been on fire, and then there's one brain that's bang goal, and that's, we don't do that, other teams might let us in, you know, you've done a real nice movie, get in, but then we, we stuff the shot, the cross, the pass, whatever it is, that final third, and, uh, you know, I tried Grant up front, because uh, O'Dane's back, I thought he got through the game well, didn't like getting sub, but you know, you've got to think of next week, um, uh, I don't know, a couple more still, Billy and Hedger out, but, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm just talking now, okay. Uh, moving on to next week, Zebra's in the Cup. What's going to be your approach heading into that one? Well, obviously, the obvious. There's two obvious leads for you. Three. Uh, the set pieces, um, uh, you know, and their size in the box. Um, they don't... Uh, I think almost direct opposite to Devonport, really, the way they play. So it's going to be difficult. We don't get to really set up, but... Yeah, we'll just look at um, not giving away silly free kicks, try and make them play the ball, and uh, corners obviously are a killer too, so um, we'll be up against it, but that, that's all I focused on then, there's no point going on about that 45 minutes. Uh, we'll get to training Tuesday, get the bodies right, and uh, whoever uh, deserves a game gets a game, and we'll go out and do our best. Is there potential for a few changes into the team after that result? Then? Oh... Well, Heggie just told me he's unavailable. Billy and Hedgie are both unavailable. So the answer's probably no. I I think um, Rui and Sam Randall, like, Randall's uh, known him since, since he was a kid, and he's not the quickest bloke going around, but um, he's got really nice feet. So, you know, it's one of those things. You, you, you take it, you know, the two guys I put in the midfield today, you take a cut of pace and movement for guys that can play, and obviously as soon as they just lost structure... And you can't run and you've lost structure at all, we're, we're, we're up against it. But, yeah, I don't know, it's up to them, I guess. We'll see how they train. and um, Some guys are penned in, but certainly spots have come open after that, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Thanks, lads. So, Chris, nil all half-time, and then you've ended up 5 0 victors. Pretty emphatic in the end. What uh, was the turning point in the second half for you? I just think we executed a little bit better. That was it, really, in the second half. Um, didn't change too much and, and just made sure that we're a bit more thorough in, in possession and then also reacted quite well in the out of possession in this transition moment. So it's good, it's positive. What was the message at half time? Uh, it wasn't too much to be honest with you. Like I said, it's really just being composed 
in possession of the ball. I think we were a little bit um, anxious at times, but um, it was so pleasing for them to, to try to do that and then be brave enough and then to do it and execute it so well. Yeah. Um, what, what do you still need to improve on, do you think? I don't know. I think I, we have to look over every game. Every game is different for us, you know what I mean? And there's little issues here and there, but um, just being, I, th I think, calmness and not being so emotional in the football game as well. Sometimes we kind of rush things, in, both defensively and in possession of the ball. So we just need to be calmer, and that will come. come. What's prompted the switch to throw at the back? It seems to be very, very successful for you. What prompted that change? Just thorough, thorough, you know, your jobs. That's what it is. It's really. Um, being more precise in, in and out of possession, I think, and, and knowing what our roles are. That's it, really. It's allowed, I suppose, Holden and Bidwell are mm -hmm. particularly effective in it. Yeah. You happy with the way they go? Definitely. Like, you know, who would have thought Bidwell, at the start of the year, would have been one of them ones, you know, at the right fullback and or coming from potentially in the past from a centre midfield role to a right fullback is so promising and such a great thing. And then you saw 40 come on as well during the game, the second half. And these young boys deserve a chance, you know, this is Tasmanian's future. Um, and it's important that they see that, you know, that pathway. So you're confident you've got some, some depth on the bench and some more options throughout the season that we've perhaps not seen yet, but you've got up your sleeve? Yeah, it depends what kind of depth you talk about. Anyone can put numbers on the bench. I think you need a little bit of experience as well. And games like this provides experience for young players, you know, but the older players really stu stood up and really guided them today, which is good. Millington we saw in defence earlier in the year, had a big impact up top today. Where, yeah. How do you think where he's better suited? I think he's a bit of a, he's, he's a mixed bag a little bit, Lindsay. He can play up front and he can play at the back, he can play anywhere. And he's such a great um, great character around the place and a good lad. He's so um, you know involved in football and he's had so much in it. So 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 pleasing for us. It's been a good few few weeks for you guys. Do you mm. see ourselves as one of the real title fight or challenges at mm. least now? I don't know. I think for us, like... It's, I know we go back to that old cliche, one game at a time, but we've really got to be improving every week and, and not just not just in terms of winning and whatnot, the three points. I think development, this is what I'm partly here for, and I think um, people need to understand that clearly is that it's not just um, trying to win and get three points, but also developing these young these young players that you have in here and uh, giving them opportunities and a bit of a pathway for them to, a bit of guidance as well. You know, so that's why I'm partly here. Uh, Glenorchy Knights in the Lacka Sergio Cup now, attention turns to that, some thoughts on yeah. that match? I don't really know too much to be honest with you, um, but I know that they're doing quite well in their league. They'll be up there, and it's a difficult league. It's a physical league, um, and like Clarence said today, we're very physical as well. So I think we showed that we can match that, but um, we just need to be more, a little bit more intelligent. And I think um, Glenorchy will definitely um, provide problems. We just need to ensure that we're on top of our game a little bit. Does the approach change at all for a cup game from a league game? I don't think it has to really. I think you need to make sure that you're. You're still focused, and there's still the principles of our play in and out of possession still remain the same. We've just got to be, again, we have to be developing and improving week by week. It's that stepping stone every week. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, Thanks. 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 Th